Hey guys, uh, just making this video. This is uh, to cover some of the books that I've been reading. Um, I asked you if you wanted to see it, and somebody had already specifically asked for the books video that I deleted. So um, I'm basically remaking it into an updated version anyway, because I've had more books since then. But anyway, without further ado, because I've got a lot to go through, let's have a look at these. First one, Ill Effects, The Media Violence Debate by Martin Barker and Julian Petley. Now this is uh, quite an interesting book. It's a bunch of articles that have been brought together and edited by Martin Barker and Julian Petley. A couple of them written by those guys. And uh, it examines the, um, as it says here, the, the media violence debate. and looks at the various areas, right from film to TV, um, all that kind of stuff. If you're interested in, uh, in the media violence debate, fascinating book to have a look at. A little dry. But um, there's some pretty good content in there. It's definitely worth a look. Next one, Nightmare Movies, A Critical Guide to Contemporary Horror Films by Kim Newman. Now, Kim Newman should be fairly familiar to, uh, to a bunch here. He's um, one of the foremost horror writers. And this book's particularly good. It's got a whole bunch of uh, interesting areas that it looks at, from cannibal films, zombie films, psychological films and um, it's it's a pretty interesting read. It, it covers a, a heck of a lot of ground. And the only problem with Kim Newman as a writer, as far as I'm concerned, is he does tend to write like he's writing for a reference book. So there's a lot of cross-referencing going on, which can be a little distracting, but um, nonetheless, it's a pretty damn, pretty damn good book. Next one, Jay Slater's Eaten Alive, Italian uh, Cannibal and Zombie Movies. Now, as many of you know, I'm sort of really into the Italian horror scene of the 70s and early 80s, particularly. And in particular, the cannibal area of films, the cannibal genre. <coughs> Specifically because with Italy, um, the cannibal films were very unique to to the country's filmmaking. Uh, you know, with cannibal holocaust and cannibal ferox, nobody else was really doing that at the time. And of course the zombie films are a lot of fun, although they're much more derivative. <laughs> but this is a really good book. It's a collection of articles, um, again, by various different people, including one by my film lecturer, uh, which was quite fun to find. But, uh, yeah, a very good book, definitely worth a look. Bit of a twofer on this one. Grand Illusions 1 and 2 by Tom Savini. And it's uh, it looks at um, the horror makeup and how they did it and all that kind of stuff. Tom Savini's a bit of a hero of mine. I've always um, been fascinated by his work, and he's really one of the people that got me interested in really looking at films. So definitely worth checking out. Grand Illusions one is if you're going to go for either one, one or the other. The first one's the best one. The second one's got a lot of interesting stuff in it too. It's not quite as good as that, though. Next one. Spaghetti Nightmares. Italian fantasy horrors are seen through the eyes of their protagonists. It's, this is a bunch of interviews with, uh, with the various directors, stars, um, and technicians, film, um, film crews. And it goes through all the kind of movies. Uh, oh, oh, several of the movies and a lot of the directors. I think there's one with... Uh, but uh, Lenzi as well in here, which is quite interesting to read. It's also an interview with Tom Savini. Uh, and it's great for a little bit of background on some of your favourite films and some of your favourite directors. So definitely worth a check out. And I think you can probably get this pretty cheap now anyway. So worth picking up if you've got a few extra quid in your pocket. This one which I picked up at uh, Fright Fest. One of two that I picked up at Fright Fest. Horror, 330 films, 333 films to scare you to death. Nearly missed out three of the films. James Marriott and Kim Newman. Again, it has that whole kind of Kim Newman thing of being a bit referency, but it goes through the various decades and picks out the icons of those decades in the horror genre and um, talks about them. So it goes right from the 30s right through to yeah, 2000s. So pretty up to date. Next one, Flesh and Blood Compendium. Uh, another one which is a collection of um, articles 
from the publication Fesh, uh, Flesh and Blood. It's a pretty hefty tome, and it covers a whole bunch of stuff, right from um, exploitation horror through to exploitation sex films and all that kind of stuff. It's uh, it's a pretty interesting book. It's not the easiest one to get into necessarily, but it's brilliantly um, illustrated, which is really nice. It's a very nicely put together book. And I'm having to be careful about what I actually show you in here because, quite frankly, there's a heck of a lot of nudity in this, as one would expect. Very interesting book. It, it, it was quite expensive when I got it. I don't even know if you can get still get hold of it, but I'll um, I'll check that out and put it into links and stuff if you can get it still. Next one. Another one from Fright Fest, Art of the Nasty. Now this is a particularly interesting book for the uh, for the video nasties uh, special interest section, and it's got a whole bunch of the covers, the front the uh, front covers from the videos at the time, and a little bit of a synopsis of what um, the film's about. It doesn't go terribly deep into any of that stuff, but um, it's done into sort of sections like uh, the one that got away. You know, so you've got Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which wasn't on the DPP list, and Shogun Assassin, which sort of just managed to scrape out of uh, being on a DPP list. I will be doing that as part of the Nasties review, because it's one of the two. That with Extro, that is commonly associated with the Video Nasties um, lists. So I'll be hitting that at some point. But a fascinating book, and a great little... Um, Easy read, uh, very quick reference to to the nasties and the whole kind of video scare. Next one, Meters Murder, Illustrated Guide to Cannibal Culture. Really well written book. Um, it looks at the sort of the history of cannibals and cannibalism in films, and indeed, actually, kind of um, some of the history of it, anthropologically speaking. And it's um, it's incredibly well written. It's a it's a very grim subject, but um, it, it references it towards the kind of um, films, you know, the real cases and how those inspired the various films and all that kind of stuff, and um, even how it gets um, the the subject of cannibalism got into mainstream cinema. So, really good book next one is from the same series of books Killing for Culture, Illustrated History of Death Film from Mondo to Snuff um, <coughs> does a very similar thing in many respects it is probably the chief the, the best example of the write, of writing on, on this particular subject, it's certainly one of the most comprehensive it's absolutely fascinating, it goes through the various sections of, um, of Mondo and death film and the feature films and um, basically charts how uh, you know kind of mainstream cinema sort of takes bits and pieces from these various uh, genres and even looks into kind of snuff as a um, as a subject matter uh, and you know how uh, is it real all that kind of stuff it goes through all the kind of stuff like um, faces of death traces of death all that sort of stuff and um, talks about it in probably the most lucid manner that you can possibly do and it's a pretty easy read it's a sort of moderate uh, moderately difficult to get into but once you do it's almost it's almost impossible to put down sweet and savage the world through the shock commentary film lens um, one of the few books that is dedicated to mondo as a subject and it is um, pretty damn good actually it's almost as good as um, as killing for culture in my opinion and it tackles a very difficult and very obscure area so if you have any interest in Mondo it's well worth picking that up there's not too many books specifically on that subject so go check it out see what you think Next one, Underground USA, Filmmaking Beyond the Hollywood Canon. Again, another one with just articles, and again, one with a article by my uh, film lecturer. 
and it looks at the uh, the non-Hollywood kind of films that come out of the USA, the independent films um, of the darker nature, obviously. <clears throat> and it goes into subjects like um, Andy Warhol and uh, realist horror. And I, I used a couple of these bits in um, in my dissertations when I was writing it. It's a pretty damn interesting book if you can get hold of it. Um, definitely check it out. Oh, and that's by Xavier Mendick and Stephen J. Schneider. They've done a few bits and pieces, those guys. Uh, they're pretty interesting writers. <clears throat> Next one. John Trevelyan, What the Censor Saw. Now, John Trevelyan is, or should say was, the chief BBFC examiner um, in the 60s. I think from the 50s. He was, he was quite a long-standing chief examiner for the BBFC. And this is kind of his side of the story, you know, when um, of, of his time as the chief examiner and various kind of conflicts that they sort of went through, not just with the filmmakers but with the government. And uh, it is absolutely fascinating to see it from the other side. And John Trevelyan is a guy that I had quite a lot of respect for. He's a fascinating bloke. And um, he, he's clearly a film lover as well. Now, um, the way he handled a lot of the disputes um, was quite fascinating and you didn't tend to see an awful lot of that from from the censors themselves they were usually government stooges and he was um, a very very smart very interesting and a very thoughtful guy not always consistent and not always right but um, it's absolutely fascinating to see it kind of from the other side and actually uh, you know, hear the words from the chief examiner and bear in mind back in his day it was a very very secretive operation uh, the BBFC you just didn't know anything about it so that was pretty much um, groundbreaking book in that respect because it showed it from the, uh, the process from the inside and the last one the video nasties I left this one to the last one because it's actually one of my prize books the video nasty is Freedom and Censorship in the Media, edited by Martin Barker. Now, as far as I know, this book only ever had like one print run. So there's not there's no contemporary um release of this now. You can only get hold of it second hand and uh as you can see from that, it it was from a, an American library. It's even got the card in it. <laughs> It's um, a book with, again, a lot of articles uh, all put together by Martin Barker uh, from various contributors. And it's an academic response, by and large, to the events of the Video Nasty Scare. And it was done at the height to try and redress the balance because it was very one-sided at the time. This is really one of the iconic books in my opinion because it was so contemporary because it was so immediate a response to what was going on and there's some fascinating little articles in here including one called Jay Hills is Alive A Defense of Ice Spit on Your Grave by Marco Starr and um, that, I mean that in particular is a absolutely fascinating look at uh, one of the most controversial um, film titles of the time, and one which I will be getting to at some point. But if you can get hold of this, you know, I'd be prepared to spend a load of money for this. Very good book. <coughs> I'm going to call it there because I'm just about run out of time. I'm going to try and put the links in to try and find these things. Whatever I can't, I'll let you know. But that's it for now, guys. Lampy Man out.